Hello everyone. In this eighth lesson of how to make your first game in Unity, we are going to bring in a player for our player cube, and we're also going to take a look at music and sound effects. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really, really helps me out. Now, on with the show. So first thing to note is you'll notice I have a window open here in Chrome and it is known as the Asset Store. So there are a couple of different ways to access the Asset Store depending on what version of Unity you are using. If you are using Unity 2020 and above, at least for now, you cannot access the Asset Store via the Unity editor itself. You have to do it via the website. Why Unity has made that decision, I'm not entirely sure, but I do consider it a bit counterproductive. Either way, because I'm using version 2020 in this tutorial, we will be using the website. I will show you a little later on how you can actually still do all the exact same thing via the Unity editor itself. Either way, if you want to do it this way, you can. You just go to assetstore.unity.com. Now we're going to search for a character that we'll be able to use in our game for free. So if we go to search, and we can search here for pretty much anything at all, absolutely anything. And what I want to go for is you've probably seen it in the thumbnail is that little low poly animal. So if we go to search and type, uh, let's say free low poly animal, free low poly animal. And you should see it probably first, second, third, right there. You don't have to use the same one as me. You can use a completely different one. I guess it just depends on your preferences. So I've gone with this one and I have already downloaded it earlier this year because I've used it in a couple of different projects, as you can see. And all we need to do is open in Unity. So we literally click that button as long as you're logged in, that is. So make sure you are logged in. And it will take you over to the package manager. And again, I feel this is a bit counterproductive from the original asset store, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Either way, when you get to this screen, you should see it selected here, the asset you've just brought into Unity. You just then need to click download or import, depending on whether you've previously downloaded it or not, or whether you've previously imported it or not. Either way, as long as you've downloaded it and imported it, you shouldn't have a problem. So when you do import, you'll be presented with this screen. We just need to import. It'll take just a couple of moments to bring it over into Unity, but you shouldn't have much of a problem after that. There we go. And now we can see this folder has appeared down here. So let's click back to the scene view off the package manager. And next, what I want to do is bring in some sound effects and some music for our game. So while we're here, let's right click, create folder. We'll call this one audio. And within this audio folder, we're going to have another folder just for effects. So right click, create folder FX. Now what we'll do is we will bring two audio clips over so we can drag and drop these into Unity. And if you want these two files, you can get them on my website. Link is in the description. Head to the downloads and assets section and go to the correct tutorial section and you can download these under lesson number eight. So drag these into Unity. Make sure you do unzip them from the file if you get them from my website. And then let's drag this coin SFX file into this effects folder. Now we have everything set up nicely. There's our audio, there's our game background music. And if we go further down, we can see our effects right there. So let's do this in this specific order. Let's add some game music. Let's add a sound effect for collecting the coin. And then let's add the player character at the end. So how do we make it so as we can have this music playing while we're in our scene. It's very easy. So we already have an empty game object here. Let's use this empty game object that we attach the text global coin script to and use this as kind of like a global mechanic. So we've got all kinds of different things on here. So we could theoretically attach our game background music to this game object. I'm going to set its position to zero, zero, zero. So it is in the center of our scene. Now you can drag and drop that game background music over here and it will add it as a component. 
So I'm not going to go into much of this here, but the main things you want to note here are play on awake is ticked, so as it plays straight away. Loop is ticked, so it constantly loops. And probably things like pitch and volume. I'm going to reduce the volume because I do believe the audio for this is fairly loud when I made it. So I'm going to reduce it and keep the pitch as one. You can mess around with the blend if you want to, but honestly, I think it would probably serve its purpose well enough as it is. So if we press play now, we should hear it. And that is quite loud. That is quite loud. So obviously we do need to reduce that a little more. So I'm going to have 0.05. I don't want it too loud, but I don't want it too quiet. And I think that'll probably do just about right. So next thing we need to do is we need to add some sound effects for when we collect the coins. And I'm going to do this on the main camera. So I'm going to right click, create empty. We'll have this as FX. And in here, I'm going to right click, create another empty object. And I'm going to call this one coin collect. This time, let's go to our effects folder and drag and drop coin SFX onto the object up here, like so. Now what we need to do is untick play on awake. The reason we do that is because we only want to be able to play this audio clip via script. We don't want it to play straight away. So how do we make it so as we can play that audio script from collecting a coin? It's pretty simple. Let's go to our scripts folder. And let's go to our coin collect script. With this, we now need to add an extra variable. So let's add public. Now the type of this variable is going to be audio source with a capital A and a capital S. Audio source. And we can call this anything we want. Let's call it something relative to what we're doing. Collect FX semicolon and then before we have counted an extra coin there so before global coins dot coin count plus equals one we now need to put collect fx dot play open close bracket semicolon and save our script now if we head back into unity and just let that script compile we can then select all of our coins like we've done a couple of times before and you'll notice that that collect effect is there. So all we need to do is drag and drop coin collect onto there and now we've assigned that sound into the variable. So if we press play we should be able to hear the collect sound. Perfect. So now we're starting to get into something which we would consider a game. It's starting to look a bit more presentable. So what we'll do now is we will add one of these models that we imported at the beginning of this tutorial into our game. So let's double click on player. And we can see here, it's still just the cube. However, we are going to continue using that cube as the player, but we're gonna do something very clever we're going to attach a game object inside that cube, which will look like it's an actual player rather than the cube. So if we go to this gloomy animal folder, and if we go to meshes, we can see we can use a chicken, a condor, or a dragon. All three of those are in the thumbnail. I guess it's up to you which one you want to use. It's th There's no right or wrong here. Again, you can use a different model completely. But let's take, should we take this dragon? Let's take the dragon. And what we'll do is I will drag him onto player. And we can see there he is. So I think he probably does need to be reduced in size a little bit. He is quite large. So let's reduce the scale to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Is he a little too small now? I think he might be. So let's increase the scale. 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. And I think that probably looks not too bad. Again, I think it's more a case of you kind of refining this a little more. If you want to have it as 0 0.5, you absolutely can. It's your game at the end of the day. 
So I'm going to keep him as 0 0.5. And what we'll do now is we will take the player and then untick Mesh Renderer. Now let's press play. It's not going to work exactly as we want. However, we now have a player rather than a cube, which still works. So the idea of what we've done here is that we are keeping that cube as the actual player. However, we now have a model inside the cube and we have turned the rendering of the cube off. So it visually looks like the model inside the cube is what is being played here. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to modify how this looks a little bit. So we're gonna work with animations and we're going to be able to move this player around. So whichever way we're moving, that's the direction he will face. And obviously, like I say, animations will be involved in some of this as well. So until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.